Hey guys, I'm Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning. As a metrology engineer, I've had the opportunity to measure parts in a variety of environments, ranging from garages to clean rooms. And each lab environment I've worked in has had its own unique challenges that have made at least a portion of my job more difficult. Now, metrology labs come in many shapes and sizes, and the purpose of each varies significantly depending on the types of parts being inspected. But no matter what you're inspecting, there are some things you should consider before starting up a new metrology or quality control lab. So in this video, I'm going to discuss nine things that you should consider when designing a new lab space. One of the first things you should consider when starting a new lab is the temperature of your lab space. Materials expand and shrink as a function of temperature. When temperature gets warmer, parts expand. When temperature gets cooler, parts shrink. So it's important that all labs, IQC and OQC for instance, measure parts at the same temperature. In fact, dimensional inspection standards actually specify the temperature that parts should get measured at. According to ASME Y14.5, unless otherwise specified on the drawing, parts should be measured at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Just like the parts you're measuring, your inspection equipment will also expand and contract during the measurement process. To limit how much this occurs, many inspection equipment manufacturers specify a temperature range that their equipment must be within in order to hit their accuracy specifications. But how close to 20 degrees Celsius is good enough? Well, that will depend on the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is a property of the material your part is made of, and also the tolerances on your drawing. Calculate how much your parts will expand given a certain temperature change and see how that compares to your tolerances. If you're just looking for a good rule of thumb, the Metrology Handbook recommends 20 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree for general purpose dimensional calibration labs. But what if you can't maintain the temperature you need to achieve in order to measure your parts at an acceptable accuracy level? You can still measure your parts but you will have to correct your measurement afterwards. Some CMM manufacturers provide temperature compensation as an option for their CMMs. This corrects for expansion and shrink of the machine and also comes with temperature probes to place on or near your part in case the part is at a different temperature than the machine. Once your lab space is set up, make sure to do the following to reduce the effects of temperature variation. One, Wait a few hours before measuring your parts so that they can reach the same temperature as the lab. Two, spread thermometers throughout the lab to monitor temperature consistency. If the temperature isn't consistent, get some fans and move the air around. And three, identify heat sources and ensure parts and measurement equipment are not placed near these heat sources. While you're thinking about temperature, make sure to also consider humidity. Unfortunately, humidity and temperature aren't two independent things that can be easily controlled on their own. Making a change to your space's temperature may also have an undesired effect on humidity, and vice versa. Bad stuff can happen if your humidity is too high or too low. For instance, if your humidity is too low, static electricity can build up, causing you to get shocked every time you touch something that can discharge it. On the other hand, if your humidity is too high, condensation can occur causing rust to build up on your precision equipment. The Metrology Handbook recommends a humidity range of 20 to 45% for general purpose dimensional calibration laboratories. A few years back, I used to work in a metrology lab that was supposed to have good environmental controls. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I remember one weekend I came in and the lab felt like a rainforest. And I had left some V blocks out over the weekend and there was already a layer of rust on these V-blocks. Needless to say, I wasn't too happy. While we're on the topic of air, let's discuss cleanliness. It is important to keep your metrology lab space clean so that your measurements can be as accurate as possible. Any dust or foreign material on your parts can cause a mismeasurement, especially when using non-contact methods like vision systems. Foreign material on your measurement equipment can also cause incorrect measurements. Think particles on a CMM stylus. Failing to keep your lab space clean increases the chances of these types of errors occurring. 
In extreme cases, you may also want to consider making your lab a clean room. There are different clean room classifications specified by ISO standards, each with their own requirements. But keep in mind that clean rooms will also make your life more inconvenient. For instance, you may have to gown up prior to entering the clean room. Here are a few easy things you can do to keep your lab space clean. One, implement a regular cleaning schedule. Wipe down all surfaces and sweep the floor at least once a week. And if possible, avoid cleaning methods that will simply spread the dust around the lab. Two, wear gloves. This will prevent the transfer of dust from your clothing onto parts via sticky or sweaty hands. And three, positive air pressure. Talk to your HVAC folks and see if they can ensure air is always blowing out of the lab space instead of into it. Although it seems obvious, we're also going to talk about the size of your lab space. When finding or specking out a space for your new metrology lab, make sure to consider footprint size, ceiling height, and door size. The footprint of your lab should be large enough to accommodate the equipment you have right now, plus any equipment you plan to purchase in the future as well. The footprint also needs to be large enough to allow for the servicing of your machines. Most machines require regular service such as calibrations, repairs, and preventative maintenance. While performing these tasks, service technicians may require access to the back and sides of your machines. So although it is tempting to put a machine right up against a wall, enough space should remain to accommodate whatever needs to be done. In fact, some equipment manufacturers will even specify how much space should be made available for a given machine. Ceiling should also be tall enough to accommodate taller pieces of equipment. CMMs, for example, tend to have very tall quills, and I've seen several situations where labs have had to have their ceilings heightened in order to accommodate them. And although it probably goes without saying at this point, make sure that your doors are tall enough as well. Just because your ceiling is tall enough doesn't mean that your doorways are. So make sure you avoid having to heighten your doorways when you purchase a taller piece of equipment. And while we're on the topic of doorways, it may be tempting to get a space with a garage door opening directly onto a loading dock. But remember that we also need to make sure that temperature and humidity is set correctly. So it might be better to go with some doors that face internal to the building instead of external. The next thing you should consider is lighting. Although it might not be super obvious, lighting can be extremely critical in a metrology lab. The first reason is due to temperature. Sunlight coming in through a window could cause the part or equipment to heat up to a temperature that is higher than the air around it. So although your ambient temperature readings are within spec, your measurements could be off. So make sure your parts and equipment are out of direct sunlight. The second reason lighting is important is due to repeatability. If your lab uses non-contact measurement methods, such as optical measuring machines and some types of 3D scanners, lighting consistency becomes really important. As an example, let's say you're using an OMM to inspect 50 parts. You program the OMM and your program passes gauge R&R &R and everything looks good, and you inspect the first 25 parts. But then someone turns on the lights in the other half of the lab. In rare circumstances, a slight change in the lighting conditions could be enough to cause a mismeasurement in the OMM's measurement routine. Another less commonly thought of factor to consider is noise. Why would noise matter in a metrology lab? Well, besides saving your eardrums and allowing you to carry on a conversation at a normal volume level, a quieter workspace can be useful when running automated programs on CNC inspection equipment like CMMs. While running these programs, machines typically emit beeping noises to indicate both successful and unsuccessful measurements. If you're working on multiple machines at the same time, or have walked away from the machine, it's nice to be able to pick up on a failed measurement so that you can go investigate what is going on before the machine is paused for too long. This might seem like another obvious one. Of course, I can't measure parts if my CMM is rattling. And yes, large vibrations will cause movement between parts and your measurement equipment, and could even damage your equipment. But much smaller vibrations, vibrations you can't even feel or hear, 
can also impact your measurement process. Situations in which the part is separated from the measurement equipment can be especially susceptible to small vibrations. Structured light 3D scanners are a good example of this. In fact, higher end structured light 3D scanners like this Steinbickler have built-in monitoring to ensure the part does not move relative to the scanner. More sensitive equipment like non-contact surface profilometers will pick up extremely small vibrations. For these types of machines, it's best to purchase equipment that will isolate the measurement tool from any vibrations coming through the floor. Here are a few things you can do to prevent vibrations from becoming a problem in your lab. One, don't put your lab space near vibrating equipment, like lathes or mills. Two, install your lab in a space with a concrete slab. Avoid putting your lab anywhere but the base floor of your building. And three, don't use any type of flooring that will transfer footsteps displacement to the measurement equipment when walking by. Most of the equipment in your lab will probably need power, so make sure that there are plenty of outlets and that they're evenly distributed. If necessary, have an electrician move or add additional outlets. Thankfully, most metrology equipment only requires 120 volt power. But there are some machines that will need something higher. For instance, GOM's 3D scanning cells require 200 to 500 volts. So make sure to check what your equipment needs just to be safe. In addition to power, make sure to consider the air requirements for your inspection equipment. For instance, most CNC or DCC coordinate measuring machines require compressed air to operate. The air bearings on these machines allow smooth and efficient movement of the machine's axes. Another reason for having compressed air in your lab is for fixturing. Non-rigid parts often require a vacuum fixture in order to suck the parts flat during the inspection process. And having an air supply allows the use of a venturi pump when a vacuum pump may not be available. And remember when we discussed cleanliness earlier in this video? An air supply is also very useful for spraying dust off of your parts prior to inspection. That wraps up my nine tips for ensuring your metrology or QC lab space is problem free and ready to move into. Hopefully you learned something new along the way and didn't fall asleep. In a future video, we will discuss what equipment to put inside your metrology lab space once it's all set up. So make sure to check this channel periodically for future videos about metrology. I'm also curious about your own experiences. What annoys you about your lab space? What would you improve about your lab's environment? What tips would you give someone starting a metrology or QC lab? Let us know in the comments below. And if you ever need 3D scanning services for either inspection or reverse engineering applications, make sure to check out Sentinel 3D Scanning at sentinel3dscanning.com.